Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Le Break. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian works and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday witnessed the Dubai World Cup Championship at the Maidan Racetracks in Dubai. The championship witnessed the participation of 117 horses of the first category in its 25th edition, with a Bahraini participation in the main half for a distance of 2,000 meters by the horse Salute, the soldier, the horse Glen Force in the seventh half for a distance of 1,800 meters, and the horse Samsir in the eighth half for a distance of 2,410 meters. His Highness affirmed that the Vice President of the United Arab Emirates, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's vision has contributed to placing Dubai at the center of the world's attention with the Dubai World Cup Championship. Expressing pride in the presence of the victorious team in three races in the championship, the most important of which the main race. His Highness expresses congratulations to the UAE for Mystic Guide's first place win in the main round led by Louis Saiz and to the coach Michael Steedham. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the Dubai World Cup is no longer only a sporting field as it has turned Dubai into the international focus of attention through the wide participation and the large number of fans which reflects the vision and efforts of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and highlights his clear impact at the organizational level of the championship in the 25th edition. He added that the event is one of the strongest races in the world where the participants affirm the strength of competition and the determination to achieve advanced positions in the race. His Highness indicated that the participation of Victoria's has achieved many goals in the championship which is a great motivation to continue to participate in large international championships noting that the team will continue to achieve positive results that highlight the status of the equestrian sport in the kingdom. The Shura Council held its weekly meeting remotely presided over by the chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh. The council approved decree by law 25 of the year 2020 on amending a number of provisions of the reorganization and bankruptcy law. The council also drafted or discussed a draft law adding a new article number 261 to the pen pen penalties law issued under decree by law 15 of the year 1976. The draft law amending a number of provisions of law 3 of the year 2002 on the election system of municipal council members was also approved. Under the patronage of the President of the Court of Cassation and uh, Deputy President of the Supreme Judicial Council, uh, Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al Bouhainin, the first international conference on artificial intelligence in uh, judicial practice, Mahakim 4.0, was held virtually today, organized by the CIO Global Forum Dubai. The conference emphasized how judiciaries began the early usage of artificial intelligence to improve courtroom efficiencies and showcase some of the pioneering examples and real life cases. President of the Artificial Intelligence Society and Chairman of the conference, Dr. Jassim Hedji, stated that artificial intelligence has immense potential to assist the judges in legal decision-making, like granting of parole, deciding on the bail and determining the appropriate sentence, thus expediting the judicial process. To speak more about this, we are joined by the chairman of the conference and president of the Artificial Intelligence Society, Dr. Jassim Hadji. Welcome to the news, Dr. Jassim. Thank you and good evening. Good evening. Tell you, can you please tell us more about the topics of the conference and how can AI be more integrated in the judicial work in Bahrain? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. The conference, as uh, mentioned rightly, this is the first of its kind in the, in the region, but probably one of the first in the global level as well, focusing on the artificial intelligence um, uh, and its implications and with machine learning in the area of judiciary. We had uh, uh, this afternoon uh, participants and speakers from France, Singapore, Belgium, and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 
those who are uh, having expertise in the area of artificial intelligence, data, and law. The future of the entire business uh, uh, streamlining is with the artificial intelligence, and uh, nonetheless, the, the the courts of the future will be uh, witnessing more of machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, using the the data, the big data, and the historical analytics uh, to provide forecasting for the future and helping judges to uh, expedite their processes and have smarter expertise in this vital area. Uh, we will move from the traditional electronic uh, transformation to more of intelligence where machines will be taking autonomous decisions in this area. Of course, Bahrain has been pioneer in the development of uh, digital transformation. As uh, His Majesty mentioned, the usage of artificial intelligence in the opening of the two majesties in 2019, and we are trying to implement such technologies in various sectors. And uh, His Excellency the Chancellor, Abdullah Bainan, has always been uh, uh, patronate in the area of the innovation. So he would like to see artificial intelligence in the future of the courts in Bahrain. And we use, of course, Mahakam 4.0. It stems from uh, IR 4.0, which is uh, the future of the technology. Right. Absolutely. We hope to see it as well. Thank you for being with us. And that was the president of the Artificial Intelligence Society, Dr. Jasim Hadji. Thank you for joining us. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the National Committee for Information and Population, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al-Mtawa, chaired the preparatory meeting of the National Report on Progress made in implementing the new urban plan for habitat held remotely in the presence of the Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yagoub Al-Hamar, and a number of UN representatives and relevant authorities, and mutawa hailed the national efforts that highlight Bahrain's status in the international community, affirming the government's interest in international reports and its continuous efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. For his part, the housing minister presented the report on the achievements made in the urban development field and foreseeing urban issues. The minister noted that Bahrain is pioneering in preparing national reports since the first Habitat meeting in 1976. He added that the ministry in light of the UN goals has formed a special work team dedicated to preparing the national report on progress made in implementing the new urban plan for Habitat, which will track progress, assess impact and ensure effective implementation. In light of a preparing the National Habitat Report. The Director of Housing Policies and Strategic Planning at the Ministry of Housing and Head of the Report Preparation Work Team, Sheikha Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, reviewed the content of the National Report, noting that the Housing Ministry is working diligently to review and follow up on the mechanisms of implementation of the new urban plan. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Dr. Bisara Torkovic, on the occasion of her official visit to Bahrain. Dr. Al Zayani praised the relations linking the two friendly countries and people, noting their development in various fields. For her part, the Bosnian Minister affirmed her country's keenness to develop bilateral cooperation between the two countries at various levels for the benefit of both countries and people. The two sides stressed the importance of continuing bilateral cooperation and joint coordination to achieve uh, common goals and discussed a number of regional and international issues of common concern. The Minister of Labor and Social Development and Board of Directors, Chairman of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, LMRA, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, held a meeting with the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, Samir Abdullah Nas. They discussed means of enhancing joint cooperation and coordination between the authority and the chamber to develop and enhance the level of the Bahraini labor market based on the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. They also affirmed the importance of continuing meetings and exchanging points of view as well as discussions that aim to achieve common goals that support the national economy. Hamidan and Nas reviewed the efforts and uh, projects supervised by the LMRA in addition to its programs in the field of labor inspection and the mechanism for implementing inspection campaigns in cooperation with the concerned government agencies and partners. Hamidan expressed his appreciation to the BCCI for conveying the private sector's vision for the development of economic work and serving the labor market. For his part, the BCCI chairman affirmed the importance of strengthening cooperation between LMRA 
MRA and BCCI within the framework of partnership between the public and private sectors to protect the interests of workers and business owners. Following the Cabinet's decision to approve the timeline for the implementation of the wage protection system, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Ahmedan, issued Decision 22 for the year 2021 on the timeline of implementation of the wage protection system for workers in the private sector. The decision aims to ensure the regular and timely transfer of workers' wages to their bank accounts in addition to enhancing transparency and oversight. It will also support the judicial authority in settling wage-related disputes and play a key role in mitigating adverse effects on the labor market, most notably irregular work. To speak more about the matter, we are joined by the Deputy CEO for Operations and Information at the LMRA, Mr. Ali al Kohiji. Welcome to the news, Mr. al Kohiji. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Can you please tell us more about the wage protection system in the private sector specifically? Yeah, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank you for hosting me on Bahrain TV, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank our government for the great effort that they made to providing all facilities to the employer and workers in Kingdom of Bahrain, especially in this period that the world is going through the outbreak of Corona pandemic. And return for the question, I would like to point out that the Minister of Labor, Social Development Chairman of Board of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority issued decision number 22 for the year 2021 on the timeline of implementation of the wage protection system for workers in the private sector. The wage protection system will be implemented for the commercial sector where this decision aims to ensure regular and timely transfer of worker wages to the bank accounts and that where the employer is obligated to pay the wages of, emplo of the employees uh, through any of the payment uh, methods facilitated by entities licensed by the Central Bank of, of Bahrain, which I mean is the bank or the payment service provider licensed by the CDB. On the other hand, the wage protection system will be applied on voluntary basis on the employers of the domestic workers, also commercial employers may start implementing the system before the initiation of the basis of implementation that includes them, which have been set out on the decision. Yes. How will this system be implemented and how will it benefit the workers involved? Yes. Mainly the implementation of this decision will roll out three phases, where the first phase will include employers who employ 500 workers or more and it will begin in may 2021 the second phase includes employers who employ 50 to 100 uh, to 499 workers and it is implementation is scheduled to september 2021 while the third and the last phase includes employers who employ from 1 to 49 workers and it is scheduled to begin in January 2022. Noting that there will be a great period of six months will be provided to the employer to apply the provision of this decision. This decision focuses on practice and in particular of protecting worker financial rights which are governed by their contracts and a decision consists of strengthening efforts aimed by combating trafficking in person and forced labor by identifying suspicious cases that fail to pay monthly salary on time which will help um, which will help employers and employees to maintain a professional and stable work environment which will facilitate greater productivity and ensure continuity of business growth yes thank you very but much for yes uh, if I can add, finally, please, please do. Uh, we urge employers to start implementing the process by opening bank accounts and start transferring the wage through the banks for all their employers prior to their decision implementation. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. That was the Deputy CEO for Operations and Information at the LMRA, Mr. Ali Al-Kohiji. Thank you for being with us.
The second day of the Formula One Grand Prix 2021 continued successfully yesterday following complete precautionary and preventative measures. More in this report with Mohamed Youssef. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the Formula One Grand Prix 2021, attracting a large number of car race enthusiasts from around the world. In its second day, the event witnessed the attendance of officials, fans and tourists and many visitors. Once you, uh, from the gate, uh, you will notice the, uh, the precaution and the procedure uh, to keep the all, all, the, all the attendants and safe, uh, really uh, good, and this reflects uh, uh, the level of Bahrain in terms of uh, handling all issues uh, with the pandemic. Bahrain proved its success in hosting the event despite the current circumstances resulting from the pandemic by following complete precautionary and preventive measures. For as the primary healthcare uh, this year uh, for Formula One, we have two main uh, clinics, the main one and the first term. Uh, we are uh, receiving all uh, visitors here uh, as uh, recover or vaccinated. From entrance, we are checking uh, the temperatures and to make sure all of them they are wear, uh, wearing masks. We already prepared two clinics, the main clinic which is uh, here and there is also first term clinic. It is well occupied uh, with all medical equipment and medicine which, is, which will be uh, ready to receive all emergency cases. The event also witnessed a number of activities and colorful attractions that exceeded the expectations of visitors and fans. So I'm here as an MC and a speaker for the F1 Pit Stop Challenge provided by Fanzone Events. We basically, we give the visitors uh, that are present here at the Bahrain Grand Prix 2021 the experience of a pit stop challenge and how they change the tires. We tell them, we time them as well, we tell them that the world record is the Red Bull world record held at 1.8 seconds. In hosting the Formula One Grand Prix 2021, the Kingdom of Bahrain made sure that all preventive and precautionary measures are in place to ensure the safety of all. Despite the current circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic, the Kingdom of Bahrain successfully hosts the 2021 Formula One Grand Prix with full precautionary and preventive measures. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 478,094 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 245,907 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the corona vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,850 with 861 recoveries and 865 registered new cases. 281 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 546 are contacts of active cases and 38 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.